pleasant good afternoon to one and all this is maria pushpam and in the previous class we are seeing about fluorometry and for today's class we are going to see the applications of fluorometry as well as the advantages as well as limitations of fluorometry method okay so i'll start with the application of fluorometry So basically you should remember that if you take fluorometry very trace elements can be found out using this fluorometric method very little amount of substance if present in a sample can be analyzed by fluorometry technique okay the first application is determination of uranium uranium sample is evaporated with nitric acid then it is fused with sodium fluoride on cooling this solidifies to a glassy mass which is examined in a fluorometer by this method we can estimate uranium of the order 5 into 10 to the power of minus 9 gram in 1 gram solid sample so 10 to the power of minus 9 gram 5 into 10 to the power of minus 9 gram uh, we can uh, estimate in 1 gram of a solid sample this order we can estimate that is very minute thing we can estimate is it okay in nano scale we can estimate yes so uranium can be estimated what are the things you have to do i'll repeat you have to take the uranium same sample treat with nitric acid then you have to evaporate it after evaporating it is fused with sodium fluoride then we have to cool it okay first you evaporate with nitric acid followed by fusing with sodium fluoride then you cool the sample this solidifies to a glassy mass which is examined under a fluorimeter by this method we can determine uranium of the order 10 5 into 10 to the power of minus 9 gram in 1 gram of the sample is it okay so next one determination of ruthenium for det uh, determination of ruthenium if you take ruthenium ruthenium will form a complex with 5 methyl 110 phenanthrolin and this complex fluorinces at uh, ph of 6 so by this method uh, ruthenium of the range 0.3 to 2 microgram per ml can be determined 0.3 to 2 microgram per ml can be determine that is ruthenium determination i'll repeat so if you take ruthenium this forms a complex with 5 methyl 110 phenanthrolin and this fluoresces at a ph of 6 so using this fluorometric method we can estimate uh, the range or order of 0.3 to 2 microgram per ml is it okay of ruthenium can be estimated so next one determination of boron boron forms complex with benzoin so traces of boron in steel can be estimated by complex formation of boron with benzoin it forms a complex and using that we can find if uh, if we take steel the trace of uh, boron present in steel can be estimated using this fluorometric technique is it okay and next one we are going to see is vitamin b1 so which is called as thiamine vitamin b1 is a non fluorescent substance whereas it its oxidation product if you take its oxidation product its thiochrome uh, fluoresces with blue color and this property is used for the determination of vitamin b1 in food samples like meat as well as cereals nariya food samples la pathinga unakku vitamin b1 iruka illaya na identify panna vitamin b1 vandu fluorescent substance kadaiyadu seriya and the oxidation product enna kudukuna it gives a blue color so using that we can find the presence of vitamin b1 in food samples like uh, meat cereals and many things vera 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 and all b1 is uh, found out we can estimate this using this fluorometric technique by the oxidation product because oxidation product of um, this vitamin b1 thiamine gives a blue color is it okay and with that we can identify Uh, vitamin b1 present in various samples is it clear so next application is application clinical chemistry so coming to clinical chemistry 
tetracycline in serum can be determined by fluorometry because uh, by the complex with anhydride with anhydride with aluminium it's anhydride with aluminium is it okay so serum is nothing but blood so if you take uh, tetracycline uh, uh, it can be determined uh, using this fluorometric technique is it okay so next one fluorescent indicator coming to fluorescence indicator the color of fluorescent substance it depends upon the pH of the solution. So, depending upon the pH of the solution only, we have different colors. Such substances are sensitive to pH changes and are termed as fluorescent indicators. I will repeat ma. Color of fluorescent substance depends upon the pH of the solution. On a solution or a pH of the color of the change. I will say the examples later. So, if you take this uh, substance, um, we call the thing as uh, fluorescent indicators and the, those substances we call it as fluorescent indicator because they are sensitive to pH changes. So, in our solution, when the pH change is the color change aku. using this thing we can find uh, by fluorometric method we can find the content of the substance. So, uh, what is the substance present we can identify. They are employed in colored solutions in which color changes of the usual indicator would be blocked or masked. Normal or indicators use for our We can use this fluorescent indicator. Fluorescent indicators are nothing but these are substances which are sensitive to pH changes and are termed as fluorescent indicators. Is it okay? I'll repeat. The color of fluorescent substance depends upon the pH of the solution. You have to make a point very clear. Then what we are going to say is, if if you take those substances which are sensitive to pH changes, are termed as fluorescent indicators. Why we are using this fluorescent indicators means normal colored solutions they have the color is being blocked of the indi uh, because the uh, color changes will not be seen by normal indicators. So we are using fluorescent indicators. Example, eosin at a pH of 3 to 4 it gives from colorless it gets a green color and if you take fluorescence from p at ph of 4 to 6 it gets a green color colorless to green then uh, if you take acridin uh, it gives uh, from at a ph of 5.2 to 6.6 .6, it, it changes from green to violet color and uh, quinine sulfate it uh, at the ph range of 3 to 5 it will change from blue color to violet color is it okay so these are the different examples so these are said to be uh, fluorescent indicators so why we can't use this normal indicators we are using this fluorescent indicators because by change of the color change in the, uh, the color of the fluorescent substance will change with ph of the solution if you are changing the ph of the solution is being changed uh, so we can find the end point using that you know, the color change we can find the thing so we call the thing as fluorescent indicators where we can't use normal indicators is it okay so eosin fluorescein acridin as well as quinine sulfate are being used advantages of fluorometry so coming to the advantages the sensit sensitivity of fluorescence method is 10 to 10 to the power of 3 times greater than the sensitivity of the other absorption techniques. We have uh, seen many absorption techniques. Among those techniques, this is found to be 10 to 10 to the power of 3 times greater, highly sensitive compared to the other techniques. And if you ta take the spe specificity as well as selectivity, it is found to be greater. And the results are found to be much more precise it is experimentally less complicated the experimental is said to be less com it's experimentally said to be less complicated so i'll repeat the advantages once again first one uh, if we take the sensitivity it is found to be 10 to 10 to the power of 3 times greater than the normal absorption techniques and uh, coming to specificity as a well, selectivity is found to be highly very greater compared to the other techniques and the results are said to be highly precise and the experiment is said to be less complicated. Coming to the limitations of fluorometry, the UV light used for excitation may cause destruction of the fluorescent molecule. Sometimes 
if the uv light used for excitation will cause destruction of the fluorescent molecules scattering problem is a severe one in fluorometry then presence of traces of dissolved oxygen iodine nitrogen oxide also reduces the fluorescence intensity so the trace amount of impurities will affect this method so these are said to be the drawbacks caused uh, because the drawbacks present in fluorometry so first one is uh, we are using uv light for excitation of the sample so for that purpose we are using uv and this uv will affect the fluorescent molecule second one scattering is said to be a highly uh, unwanted problem in this method presence of a very small amount of dissolved oxygen iodine then nitrogen oxide also reduces the fluorescence intensity so these are the drawbacks present in fluorometry technique is it okay so we can have a short recap of the thing what you have learned for today's class so there are six applications determination of uranium ruthenium boron vitamin b1 and its use in clinical chemistry it is used to analyze blood then uh, finally it is used as a fluorescent indicator and we have seen the advantages and finally we have the drawbacks of this fluorometric method is it okay i i think you are able to understand the class thank you for listening continue studying thank you ma